Okay. So today we'll be starting our uh, next topic, bill of material. Okay. In the bill of material, the topics we are going to cover they are what we'll see what is bill of material. Okay. What are the different bomb categories available in the system? Okay. What is bomb status and the bomb usage? How to create the bill of material? Okay. What is uh, what is the data maintained in the bomb? Okay. Bomb header data, bomb item data bomb item data what is item category what is the importance of it we'll understand what is single level bomb and what is multi-level bomb we'll understand that one and what is alternate bomb okay what is alternate bomb or multiple bomb why they are used we'll understand what is recursive bomb what is recursive bomb where it is used okay and then we'll see low level code what is low level code why it is used, we'll understand. Then we'll see some of the important reports in bill of materials. Okay, and if time permits, we'll see configuration related to bill of materials. So these are the topics we'll be covering in bill of material today. Okay, so what is bill of material? Okay, so bill of material is a comprehensive, formally structured list of components that make up an object. Okay, so the list contains a description and uh, an object number for each object together with the quantity and unit of measure. So basically bill of material gives you the list of components, list of components required to manufacture a product. Okay, so let's say you are manufacturing a cycle, you require some components. Okay, you require pedal, tire, bulb, handle, seat, all those things. So these things, these things you will maintain in the bill of material. So it will contain, it will contain object number, component number, okay, its description, okay, and its quantity required and unit of measure. Okay, so this one. This is the material code, material code, its quantity and its unit of measure. Like this, you will maintain all the components required to manufacture a product. So with this bill of material, production people will come to know for a particular material for a particular material uh, to, for a particular product to manufacture what components they require and in what quantities that's what the bill of material is okay so like let's say you you want to manufacture cycle you want to manufacture cycle so to manufacture cycle what you require you require all these things rim spokes pedals okay chain tubes okay wheels brakes all those things you require right so all these things you'll put it in the bill of material. Okay. So if you go to another one, let's say you want to manufacture laptop. Okay. So to lap to manufacture laptop, what do you require? You require keyboard, touchpad, okay, motherboard, okay, battery, all those things you require. So these things, webcam, all those things you require. So these things you'll put it in the bomb of the laptop. That's what the bill of metal is defined in the system okay so now before going into the bill of metal creation we need to understand some terminology okay so now terminology like whatever the header material the product you are going to manufacture so that is called header material and sometimes it is called the called as assembly okay assembly now the components the the materials which are required to manufacture the product they sometimes they call it as parts in some industries they call it as parts in some industries they call it as components in some industries they call it as items terminology differs from organization to organization okay but the the basically they are components okay so in some industries they call parts in some industries they call components in some industries they call it as items they are nothing but input materials okay so now we need to start with bomb usage so what is bomb usage okay so bomb usage means the bill of metal usage allows you to create separate bombs for the various areas within the company for example engineering or production okay so basically with the bomb usage what what you can do is for the same material you can create different bombs to use in different areas different areas in the organization let's say you have a material bomb you have a material bomb okay this material for a particular material bomb you can create 
one 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 bomb you can create for using in production one bomb you can use it in engineering okay one bomb in sales and distribution okay one bomb in costing okay so by using this bomb usage you can create separate bombs for separate applications in the organization when we go to the practicals we'll see that okay so that is the use of bomb usage so when you're creating the bomb you'll give bomb usage okay so now bomb categories what is bomb categories so bomb categories defines the connection to an object okay so now in the in the sap system in the sap system bombs are not only used in pp module they are also used in other models like let's say you are manufacturing a material so that is called metal bomb so in the metal bomb contains what materials are required to manufacture that particular product those are called material bombs now there are order bombs order bombs are used in sd module like let's say your customer is giving a sales order so when the customer is giving the sales order he will give the list of components we need to use we need to use to manufacture the product okay so he will give his list to manufacture the product so those are called order bombs the sales order itself he will give the uh, he give the sales order and in the sales order he will give his list of components we need to use to manufacture the product so that is called sales order okay now at the same time at the same time there is a document structure in that also you give the all the documents now equipment bomb this is used in plan maintenance module so there you create a, a bomb for equipment so in the in the equipment bomb you will have the all the list of parts of that particular equipment it will it will give you the structure of the equipment so like this bomb category will tell you the object for which you are creating bomb okay so if you see here in the pp material bomb you create the bomb for a material you create the bomb for a material okay whereas in sales you create the bomb for sales order not for the material you create a bomb for sales order this is a different category okay now in the plan maintenance you create a bomb for equipment not for material so it is called equipment bomb at the same time you can create a functional location bomb also these two are used in plan maintenance module okay like this different bombs categories are used in different areas different applications okay but as a as for pp we will be concentrating only on material bomb we will be concentrating only on this material bomb okay the other bombs other bomb categories are used in other modules so we will not be concentrating on those things at this moment okay so these are the bomb categories okay so now this is the bomb structure now let's go to the system and we'll start creating the bomb we'll create the bomb okay so now i think it might have got disconnected just wait So the transaction codes to create the bomb they are create CS01 okay now change it is CS02 okay now display it is CS03 okay so these are the transaction codes to create the bomb change and display okay so let's first I'll take the metals which are already there in the system which we created yesterday okay so this is the uh, we created one yesterday one uh, this one uh, let's say pepsi 500 ml bottle we created yesterday okay or this we created we'll take this material not this one one liter bottle it's not having bomb let, let me just check once cs03 it's already having bomb so let's let's forget that we will use this material pepsi bottle 500 ml okay we will start creating the bomb for this okay so what you need to do is the transaction code is cs01 i'll show you the navigation path go to logistics production 
master data bill of material bill of material material bomb cs0 see of course you have the other bomb categories also document structure equipment bomb functional location bomb order bomb all those things which you have seen the bomb categories but we will be creating only material bomb okay so now here go to cs01 create you enter your product which you are going to manufacture okay enter your product this is the product i am going to manufacture enter the product enter the plant in which plant you are going to manufacture now the bomb usage so bomb usage in which area in which application of the organization this bomb is going to be used okay so already there are some usages are there we will be using normally one okay normally one production okay alternative bomb will discuss further when we go into the uh, further topics as of now you enter this data then you enter okay system will take you to this screen system will take you to this screen here you will be entering the components to require to manufacture this particular product so normally pepsi bottle 500 ml to manufacture it what do you require you require normally you require solution bulk solution bulk solution okay now after that what do you require you require empty bottle empty bottle and then you require caps bottle cap bottle caps so these things you require okay i am replicating this scenario okay this one let's say you have uh, manufacturing pepsi 1 liter bottle Okay, so you require bulk solution inside it you require empty bottle and you require a cap okay so those things we are we will be putting in the bomb so let's go to bomb so we'll start entering it one item category will discuss when we create the bomb we'll discuss what is item category okay as of now i'm entering l l as the item category okay now you enter the components so let's say i have the components already ready let's say i have pepsi bulk solution one semi-finished product is there I'm entering it as a this one okay one as of now I'm maintaining it as one I'll explain you why I'm maintaining one okay now let's say next one you require empty bottle so empty bottle already we have material master if you go to the packaging material empty bottle okay empty bottle we have empty bottle we have okay I'll take this Now one more thing is you require cap okay so bottle cap okay so this is how you create the bill of metal so you enter all the components required along with their quantity unit of measure will come from material master automatically so you enter all the components you enter all the components along with their uh, what do you say along with their uh, uh, quantities and once all the data is entered you will be saving the bomb okay so this is how you create the bill of material okay once you create if you want to make any changes you go to cs02 you go to cs02 and you can change it suppose let me go to change mode okay enter here the most important thing you need to understand is if you, this is called item overview item overview now here you have two types of data okay so bomb structure will contain header data it will contain header data and it will contain the item data item data is nothing but input components data okay so now how to see the header data how to see the item relevant data we will understand now. okay so to go to header data to go to header data you need to click on this button header there is a button called header are you able to see you need to go to that here you will have the bomb header data change metal bomb header over you here you have material okay plant you have whenever you create a bomb system will assign a bomb number to it okay this is the bomb number system only will assign and there is a alternate bomb created alternate bomb got created 
Okay. Now, whenever I create one more bomb for the same metal, then alternate bomb will become two. We'll discuss that in a minute. Bomb usage, we have discussed anyhow. It is production. Now, the most important thing here is base quantity. Okay. Here, the meaning is to manufacture one bottle of Pepsi bottle, one, one number of Pepsi bottle 500 ml, you require these items. These items with these quantities. This is very important. Now here what I am doing is, I am just changing the header, I am putting it as base quantity 2, to, to, to manufacture 2 pieces, 2 pieces of Pepsi bottle 500 ml, now you require 1 liter of Pepsi bulk solution, 2 empty bottles, okay, and 2 bottle caps, that's what I am entering, because 500 ml, 500 ml become 1 liter, right, so it is 1 liter, but 2 bottles means 2 empty bottle, 2 bottle caps, that's how you define the relationship. So, defining the base quantity is very, very much crucial, very crucial in during the bomb creation. Okay, based on this only the relationship will work. So, this is the base quantity. Okay, other than this bomb status, we'll discuss bomb status in a minute. We'll discuss bomb status in a minute. What is bomb status, why it is used. Okay, now apart from this, you can maintain some additional data here. Okay, if required. Next tab is admin data. Here admin data, who created it valid from to date, who created it, oh, created from, on which date it is created, this bomb, from which ID it is created, okay, who changed it last, from which ID it got changed, all those things you can, it will, it will show over here. Now the next one is document assignment. Here, if you want to assign any documents to this bomb, you can assign it. You should have a component called DMS, document management system. Okay, so first you create the document in the document management system, and then you will assign the document over here. Okay, so this is the what do you say? Uh, header data. This is the header data. Okay. Now once the header data is there, you you want to see the item data. First you need to go to items. Click on the item button. You will have the items. Now to see the data of a particular item, to see the data of a particular item, you can go to the item data. So select the particular item. Let's say I select first item, and you click on this button, the item. So this, it will take you to the item data. See, this data, whatever you are able to see, only relevant for this component. So item number, component, okay, its quantity, its unit of measure, and there are some other indicators are there. Co-product, recursiveness allowed, all those things. These, these indicators we'll discuss when we go to the further topics like our MRP, production execution, all the, during that time we will discuss all these indicators, okay administration again for this component when it is added okay when it is changed last and for if you want to assign any document exclusively for this component you can assign it over here okay so this is called item data this is called item data so you have header data which is applicable for the entire bomb header data will, will be applicable for the entire bomb whereas item data will be applicable only for that particular item for that particular component Okay, so this is the item data and header data and item data. Okay, now the next one we will be discussing is bomb status. What is bomb status? So bomb status controls bomb processing in different application areas. Okay, when you configure your system in customizing under bill of material define, you define the bomb status. Okay, so you define status for different indicators that allow or disallow bomb processing. Let's say you have bomb with status A. So status A means, let's say, you can use it in both MRP and your production plan and released for planned order. Whereas bomb B, bomb B, you cannot use it in MRP. Okay, so that kind of statuses you configure in the bomb status. So now if you see the bomb status, let me go to the bomb again. Here if you go to the header, see, there is a bomb status. If you go to the list, okay, now, if you see the bomb status one, it can be used in all the areas. It is activated activated in all applications, MRP, planned order, costing, okay. It released for uh, uh, production, okay, sales order. It is it is activated in all the applications. Whereas, if you see bomb two, it it is not it cannot be used anywhere. Even though bomb is there, still you cannot use it as it is inactive in all the areas. So, based on your requirement. You activate in particular areas and you deactivate in particular areas, applications. 
okay so this bomb status you create in configuration when we go to configuration how we'll see how to create the bomb status okay so this is the bomb status okay like this so bomb status now again you can have for entire bomb bomb status you can have for the entire bomb header at, at header status at header level like it is whether it is allowed in MRP costing operation assignment production orders sales orders all those things or you can for the item also you can have the status for a particular item also you can have the status bomb status okay I'll show you that suppose if you go to the item let's go to the items components so if you take the component any one of the component if you go to the item data item data go to the status long text see item status it is there whether it is production relevant or not engineering relevant or not all those status you mean you can maintain here okay whether it is relevant for costing or not so those things you maintain here okay so this is the bomb status so bomb status you can set up at header level or for a particular item also you can set up the bomb status okay now the next one is item category so when we are creating the bomb when we are creating the bomb we are we are giving the item category second column this is item number second column is item category so we will understand what is this item category okay so item category the item category defines the features and functions of an item so the item category identifies whether special data must be processed and controls for the system activities okay? so the item category controls is it necessary to enter a material does the item support quantity based inventory management okay are, are both plus and minus signs are supported or sub item supported or which screens are selected and how does the screen layout of the item detail screens so all these things are controlled by item category suppose if you see here so before that the what are the item categories available so these are the item categories available if you see here you have stock item you have non-stock item variable size item text item document item class item pm structure element intra element so these are the item categories available in the system okay so we will understand how they are used so suppose if you see here so these are the ones which I have shown you okay as of now I used a stock item so suppose let's say if I use L if I enter let's say fourth component if I enter L the moment I enter L and enter see what error here what message system is throwing material is required entry for item category L that means whenever you are using L stock item you should enter a material material code otherwise system will not allow okay so I'll enter one of the material code I'm just entering a randomly one material code okay I'm entering so whenever you you are you are entering item category as, as L stock item stock item system is asking for the material code suppose let's say I'll delete this I'll delete this now I'll use item category as L non-stock item non-stock item the moment I use non-stock item the moment I enter see what's happening did system is asking for the component number no it's not asking it is asking only for quantity so let's say I enter quantity as one let's say okay the moment I enter one now what's happening it's asking for the description okay let's say uh, uh, stickers stickers bottle stickers let's say I'll enter bottle stickers bottle sticker that means on the bo on the stick on the bottle I am going to paste a sticker this sticker on that day will come you will directly consume you will not be stock you will not maintain a stock of this printed stickers will come to me along with the batch number manufacturing date those things so I'll directly paste it on that particular day itself okay so that bottle stickers now see it is it is not asking for the component code it is asking for the quantity and its description now the moment I enter again you see what will happen now it is asking for the purchasing data so based on the item category you choose system will ask for the different kind of data whereas for the stock item it didn't ask all these things it just asked metal code quantity that's all but whereas in case of non-stock item 
it asked it didn't ask for the material code it asked only for the quantity and description now it is asking you to enter the purchasing data let's say i'm entering the purchasing data okay see now it got assigned okay i'll put it to each okay so this is how see for non stock item there is no material code is required okay so now we will see one more uh, what do you see text item text item so if you use text item now you see what will happen the moment i enter see system did ask for quantity no it asking directly description so this the hot water hot water for bottle cleaning okay see now it, it took the quantity and it it it, it, uh, it, it now the for text item did it ask for the purchasing data no it didn't ask so that's how based on the item category you use item category you use okay system will process the further data this is how the item categories are used okay so those are the item categories so if you see non stock item if you see the non stock item which we used which we used just now it will ask for the purchasing data item 40 and 50 if they are the non stock items system will ask for the purchasing data okay so now that's what okay now let me save this particular bomb as of now i'm saving this bomb okay so now the it is the bomb okay now let's say now let's go to the multi level bomb okay so what is multi level bomb bomb containing materials that have their own bombs are called multi level bomb so that means one of the bomb component will have again bomb that is what called multi level bomb okay so if you see here if you go to our bomb again if you go to our bomb again display so in our bomb we, these are the components 1 2 3 4 5 okay now if you see here first component pepsi bulk solution pepsi bulk solution is having bomb again so if you see the column 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 seventh column if you see here there is a indicator activated for the pepsi bulk solution okay that is assembly that is assembly that means again it is having the bomb it is having its own bomb so this kind of a uh, structure is called multi level bomb so if you double click on that assembly indicator it will take you to the bomb of the pepsi bulk solution okay so if you continue if you click on the continue you will get the bomb of this pepsi bulk solution of course i had added randomly some materials i'll create a real time bomb of the pepsi bulk solution okay i'll create that and tomorrow i'll show you that okay so you can have this like this you can have n number of levels there is no limit based on the client based on the type of industry you are working based on the product you are working you can create multi level bombs but the only problem is as the levels keep on getting increased your system will get uh, complicated okay so it is suggested that you should have minimum number of levels so this is called multi level bomb now single level bomb means no no components will have bomb again inside it suppose if this is also not having bomb then it is become a single level bomb okay so that is single level and multi level bomb okay now coming to the recursive bomb what is recursive bomb okay so recursive bomb means a bomb a bomb is recursive if the product contains a component that has the same object number as your product okay so if you see here you are manufacturing even to manufacture even you are you you have to use k1 k2 b3 but again to manufacture b3 again you have to use e1 that means your your main material that means this is a bomb a recursive bomb that means to manufacture e1 again you are using e1 that is why it is called recursive bomb one of the bomb component will be same as your header material this is what called recursive bomb the best example in the real time is curd simple example for recursive bomb is curd you know curd right curd so to manufacture curd what you do you take milk you take milk you heat the milk to some extent and then you add small amount of curd that means 
you are manufacturing curd but you are using again the curd as a component okay connection has lost So now, uh, yeah, so the best example is curd. I'll, I'll explain you recursive bomb again. I'll explain you recursive bomb again. A bomb is recursive if the product contains a component that has the same object number as the product. Okay, that means here you are manufacturing E1, product E1. To manufacturing E1, they, again you are using in the bomb structure E1. Okay, so that is what called recursive bomb. The best example for recursive bomb is curd. So to manufacture curd, what you what you do? You take the milk, you heat the milk, and then for the milk you add small amount of curd. So that is what called recursive bomb. Okay. So this is how the recursive bomb. Now how the recursive bomb is created, we'll see. Let's say I'll go to this our same bomb. Go to change mode. Enter. Okay. So now here, let's say I'll enter the same header metal as one of the component. Now you see what will happen. Okay, now the moment I enter, see what message you are getting. System is telling bomb is recursive. That means it is indicating that you are adding one of the component same as the header material. That is why it is showing as bomb recursive. So if if you want to allow this, you need to indicate you need to click on these indicators. Recursive allowed. If you indicate that indicator, if you activate that indicator, then system will allow. Otherwise, it will not allow. Then you will save it. So this is how you create a recursive bomb. Okay, your interview question: What is a recursive bomb? Okay, can you give some example? So you have to tell what is a recursive bomb, and then you can give one example. Okay, so normally recursive bomb scenario happens in the process industries. Okay, process industries. Anyhow, I'm deleting now. Okay, so this is the a recursive bomb. Okay. So now the next one will be alternate bomb or multiple bombs. Okay. So sometimes what happens is one product may be made of different combinations of components depending on the quantity to be manufactured or the date. Okay. So sometimes what happens is you have a product, it can be manufactured using different set of components. Ultimately, you are manufacturing the same product, but components will be different. Okay, components will be differing. So those kind of scenarios you will be using alternate bombs. Okay, so those are called also called multiple bombs also. Multiple bombs also. Okay, so normally these alternative bombs differ only slightly from one another, usually in terms of component quantity. Okay, all alternatives of a multiple bomb are saved under one internal bomb number. Okay, now I'll create a bomb you will see uh, how you will be able to see. So, so for the same product, I am creating one more bomb. So, go to metal bomb, create. Okay, create metal bomb. Enter the product, enter the metal, enter the bomb. You see, the moment I enter, see what message you are getting. Alternate to added to bomb. That means system is giving the message that for this particular material and plant combination, already you have one bomb. That's what it is showing. Okay, anyhow, I want to create alternate bomb, enter. So you will go to the screen. I'll enter randomly two, three materials. I'll enter randomly two, three materials. Let me enter uh, some some materials. I'll enter as of now. Just okay. Just one minute. Huh? 
Okay, now I created the bomb for the same material. One more bomb I created. Now the same product is having two bombs, two alternate bombs. Now if you go to display, if you go to display, enter, see now it is showing two bombs. Alternate bomb one, alternate bomb two, alternate bomb two. Now if you want to go to the first bomb, select the first bomb and you click on the button item. So it will, it, you will go to the first bomb. Now if you want to go to the second bomb, select the second bomb, alternate bomb, click on the item. Okay. Now you can go to their headers also from here. Select the bomb. You are, you can go to the header of the first alternate bomb. So if you go to the header, you will have the data. See, now the bomb group number remains the same. Bomb group number remains the same, 4041. Okay. Only thing is alternate bomb number will change. So if you go back, second bomb if you go, second alternate bomb if you go, header, see, group number remains the same. Bomb number, group number remains the same. Only thing is alternate bomb number will be changing. Okay, so that is what you need to understand. So like this, you can create for a particular material and plant combination, you can create up to 99 alternate bombs for a material. If, the, if, the, if your scenario is there for a material and plant combination, you can create up to 99 alternate bombs. Okay, alternate bombs. You can create up to 99 alternate bombs. That's what you can do. This is what called alternate bombs. Okay. So this is what. Now the low level code. Okay. So what is low level code? We will understand. So the low level code is the lowest explosion level on which a material occurs in all product structures. When you create a bomb, when you create a bomb, a low level code is automatically assigned to each material which is used in MRP and costing. Okay, so low level codes are used in MRP, is used in metal requirement planning to determine the sequence in which materials are planned and by product costing to determine how the costs are rolled. Okay, so whenever you are creating the bomb, system will assign a low level code to each material. Suppose if I go to our bomb structure, if you go to the items, what is our top level material? This is the top level material. Okay. So to see the low level code, you go to MM03. You go to MM03. Okay. So this is my main product. product. Go to MM03. Take any view. Take any view. No issues. Enter the plant. Now, on adjacent to description, adjacent to description, there is a button called I. There is a button I. Information on material. If you click on that I button, it will show you the low level code here. See, there is a low level code, triple zero. Okay, so this is what we are here. So top material, low level code will be triple zero. That means it is at the top level. Now it is at the next level. Next next level metals will having the low level code one. So suppose if I go to our bomb structure, what is the next level? This one, Pepsi bulk solution. Now if you see the low level code of this, Let's go to Pepsi bulk solution low level code. Enter. Enter. Take any view. Not a problem. So now if you click on the button I. See. What is its low level code? 002. Actually it should be 001. Why it is 002 means this Pepsi bulk solution is present at second level in one of the another product. That is why it is at 002. Okay. So like this you will be able to see the low level codes. Okay. Now, where these low-level codes are used, basically, these low-level codes are used in MRP. So, during MRP, system will first plan all the metals with low-level code 0. Once that is completed, system will plan all the metals with low-level code 001. Then, it will plan all the metals with low-level code 002. Like this, the sequence will go on. Okay. So, that is what low-level codes are used. So, basically, low-level codes will give the information to the system. In, during MRP, which metals have to be planned first? Okay, so that is the use of low-level code. Your interview question, what is low-level code? Where it is used? Okay, so that is the importance of low-level code. Okay, so now let's, 
item control indicators we will discuss any of these things in uh, in the uh, in, in the further classes so in item control we have all these indicators recursive allowed discontinuation co product alternate group okay explosion item all these indicators we will have we will we will be discussing on all these indicators when we go to the respective topics already we we discussed recursive okay if you want to allow recursive you will be activating that recursive indicator so like this you will be using some of the indicators in the item control indicators okay so now after some time you want to delete the bomb okay let's say after some time i don't want to use the bomb okay so there are two options are there either either you can delete a component you can delete a component okay or you can delete the entire bomb you can delete the entire bomb so both options are possible both options are possible okay so like if you go the go to the bomb if you go to the bomb just one minute hmm. so here let's say i want to i want to I don't want to use one component anymore in my bomb. Let me go to the what is our compound product we used? 1.5. This one, right? So if you go here, take this. Okay. First bomb. So suppose now let's say I don't want to use the let me go to change mode. So suppose after some time I don't want to use these components, let's say. Water I don't want to use. Okay. So take the component, you can delete it. Delete. Okay, so like this you can delete the components. Okay. Or you want to delete the entire bomb. You don't want to use the entire bomb anymore. So go to the header. Go to the header. Here there is an indicator called deletion flag. Deletion flag. So you do this deletion flag. Save it. Now this bomb is not considered anywhere. But if you want to react, if you want to reuse that bomb again, you can go and put the uh, reverse the deletion indicator. So you go to change again. <coughs> go to the bomb header, and you you make the deletion flag activation. Then the bomb will become. Okay, you can can be used again. So that is how you can do the deletion of the bomb. Okay. So this is all about bombs. Now the question is bomb reporting. Your bomb reporting. Okay. So what are the some of the re important reports used in the bomb? Okay. So in the bomb reporting, what you can do is you can have three types of reports. Okay. One is bomb level by level. Okay. Multi-level structure. Another one is summarized bomb. Okay, we will see all these things in the system. So basically, if you go to the bomb, this let us take this material. Let me go to the bill of material. Bill of material. Okay, reporting bomb explosion, material bomb, bomb level by level. Okay, CS level. Okay, so if you go here, enter the material, enter the product. Enter the plant, enter the alternate bomb 101 because it is having two bombs. So I am entering the alternate bomb number, bomb application. Bomb application you use normally PP01, production channel. So if you use this, when I am executing this, you will be able to see the entire bomb structure on the same screen, single screen. Okay. In the normal CS03, you will not be able to see all the levels at one shot. But if you go to the CS11, you can see the entire bomb structure on the same screen. See, in the Pepsi bottle 500 ml, you have these components. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now, under the, again, the Pepsi bulk solution is having components. So, that, that bomb structure is also shown over here. Okay. So, you can see the entire structure of a bomb on the same screen. This is what called display bomb level by level. Okay. Now, the other one is multi-level bomb, multi-level bomb. So if you go to CS2L, well, it will show in a different format. See, it is showing at the same, see, Pepsi bulk solution is there. Under that, you have two components that is showing here itself and then the other components it's showing over here. So this is what called display multi-level bomb. 
okay now the next one will be the your summarized bomb so in the summarized bomb levels are not shown all components are shown as a single level that's all so if you go to cs 13 summarized bomb if you go here see there are no levels will be shown see all are shown as a single level can you can you make out which level here over here no you cannot make out okay all all components of all levels are shown as a single level that's all. this is why it is called summarized bomb okay so these are the some of the important widely used reports in the standard system now basically why the bomb is used overall now see now if you go to the bomb if you go to the bomb this is our bomb let's say I would go to the alternate bomb okay now if you go to the alternate bomb one here what is the meaning of it to produce two two bottles of Pepsi final ml you require these items correct these items okay now I want to see for thousand bottles I want to produce thousand bottles I want to see my income input materials requirement so for that it will give you the list so now here on the display metal bomb initial screen there is a field called required quantity here if you enter thousand I want to see my input metal requirement for thousand quantity now based on this system will calculate and it will show you the it will show you the requirement quantity see so to produce thousand bottles Pepsi bulk solution required is 500 liter 500 liter empty bottles are thousand bottle caps are thousand of course bottle sticker I maintained as one that is why it has come as 500 so accordingly system will calculate and it will show you the input quantity okay so this is the basic use of bomb actually okay so this is the use of bomb now the next one we'll be discussing is where use list okay so in my in my organization I have a material I want to see in which bomb structures that particular component is used okay I have a raw material or I have a packing material it is used in lot of products okay now I want to see that list for that you will be using this where use list okay I'll show you that let me take one component Pepsi bulk solution I will take now we will see where it is used okay so let's go to where use list material CS50 the transaction code is CS50 if you go here you enter your material you enter your material you want to see it okay now I want to see it in only material bombs not in other bombs so activate material bomb okay now you and now you click on the button next screen please select any type of where use list okay direct continue okay required quantity you just enter thousand something hundred something then you click on execute see this Pepsi bulk solution is used in this these ones okay it is used in these ones these components these materials see uh, we entered the same in the two two bombs that's where and again it is also used in the product 5006573 so this particular Pepsi bulk solution component is used in bombs of these products okay so that is the meaning of it where use this so you will be able to know in which products this material is present as component if you go to this bomb you will be able to see just one moment if I go to CS03 of the first one which one this one you go there alternate bomb one if you go to the item see it is present over there as a component 10 item 10 that's what here item 10 and anyhow we today we created these two this one. so this is how you can see the material wear use list okay now the another one is bomb comparison okay see you want to compare two bombs I have two bombs of a two different products I want to see which are having common materials which are having not common materials so that you can do the bomb comparison okay so if you go to the bomb let's say we'll take this one Pepsi one liter bottle Pepsi one liter bottle okay and the one which we created today the, the one which we created is this one this one now we'll compare the bombs of these two products 
Okay, so bond comparison will do. So let's go back. Okay, so here uh, CS40, the transaction code is CS40, non comparison. If you see here, it will ask you to enter your two two products. Okay, so our two products are one is 5378, next one is this one. Okay, now we'll try to compare the bombs of these two. This is one product, this is one product. Now alternate bomb 01, here also alternate bomb 01. Okay, now you try to click on the button, bomb components are summarized. Now, you, the moment you click on this, you see what will happen. See, among these all the components, only one one component is common in all the bombs, two bombs. See, Pepsi bulk solution is present in both the bombs of these products. That is why the indicator is coming as equal to. Okay, see, if you see here, any component is present in both the bombs, it will have an indicator equal, equal to equal to okay so that is what you'll be getting okay that's what why you got it over here okay so this is how you compare the bombs also you have the option of bomb comparison okay so that's all uh, configuration part we'll be discussing separately bomb configuration part we'll be discussing separately